Hi everybody! Hi Tama! Hi. So season seven is over, and, and now we're predicting season eight. And what does that mean? Season eight is the final season. So we have been doing predictions for almost three years now about where the world is going and where the characters are going, and it's going pretty much there. It's going mm -hmm. to be pretty much there. What was wise wise? Will we never be again it. Plato or Nietzsche or whoever you wanted to have said it. So this was a transition uh, season, transitions from the traditional Game of Thrones, the politic right, aspect, right. Scheming, scheming, yeah, backstabbing, backstabbing, yeah. backstabbing, scheming, backstabbing, <laughs> scheming, front stabbing, <laughs> cutthroating. Cutthroating. Uh, okay, to? To the magical part, like the right. emphasis on the song. In the kingdom is crumbling, crumbled, basically. There's just, you know, it's a technicality, basically, who will sit last on the throne you know right all that is left is to break the will but so the political will has been broken already it's out of his axis let's say and now okay. it's just like rolling you know like, <laughs> <laughs> like inception <laughs> yeah it will never end what was was will never be again will come into fruition full power in a finite way that's it yes. a new world okay a new so, world basically. so so yeah. let's start with where season seven ended the wall has fallen. Oh, finally. The wall sort has of. fallen. We have been talking about that for two and a half years. And the wall, it's not just a magical wall that has been built by Bran the Builder in order to keep out the White Walkers. Yeah. There is a lot of symbolism in it. Mm -hmm. Wall is the physical aspect of us against yes. them. Yeah, I mean, the physical aspect of a psychological yeah, exactly. thinking. Natural separation of identities. First, you don't right. say, I am, you say, I am not. Right. And the easiest way to do that is to look at the people beyond, beyond the wall. And, you and know, they are others. They are others, exactly. Yeah, he's another. So yeah. now the wall has fallen. So, so what does that mean? The, symbolically, symbolically. Symbolically, it means there is no more beyond the wall. There is no border between us and them. No, there is no border. Right. There is, it, is, yeah. Just let it, let it sink. Yeah. There is no wall. Mm -hmm. The monsters, the dead, everything. And even the day after, it means also there is no wall. Yeah. Well, the, historically, this wall is uh, inspired by Hadrian uh, Wall, which was right. built by Emperor uh, Hadrian. Yeah, um, Roman Emperor. Hadrianus or Hadrian. Roman Emperor that set the limits. They call it the limitus, the limit of mm. the empire. Okay. And the wall was the last bastion of the Roman civilization, or mm. like the Romans call it, civilization. <laughs> <laughs> and beyond the wall, there were the Picts, the Scots, the, you know. Yeah, wildling-like folk. Yeah, wildling like And magic, yeah, yeah, and yeah, sorcery. Of course, of course. And the monsters. unknown mm. is yeah, yeah. always being filled by, you know, tales and myth and right, urban right. legends. Right. And, stuff and like when that. walls fall, then you have dramatic and drastic yeah. changes. It's like a horde of Dothraki. Now they have a bridge from Essos to Westeros, and they can just cross it and unstoppable. So this will be very dramatic. I have a feeling maybe we'll see that the White Walkers bring some kind of night, like a long, mm. short night, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it will be very dark. Yeah. And not only snowing all the time, but something like really, really bleak. It has to be something, not just monsters, but, you know, like the big nothing in, in, mm. in uh, the never ending story. Yeah. Something approaching that has to be really, really scary. It can't be just like blue monsters against mm. humans. Or the, you know, the Black Plague or something like that. Like this death. Right. That is walking, you know, in this case it's physical and you can see it and right, touch it right. and kill it. No one is but it can safe. Swim. It can swim. Oh, yeah, that's true. So no one is safe from this, uh, you know, right. black plague. Right, even a king can even become a, king, a white. Yeah, yeah, a sense of dread maybe that the fall. Uh, they didn't really, and th that's the rant, so if you want to skip the rant, <laughs> they okay. didn't, uh, they, they glossed over it. Right. But the wall falling, maybe they will touch it in the next season. They have to. But the wall falling, it's like, oh, it's 8,000 years. Yes. I was waiting for, for Beric or for Tormund to say, oh my God, yeah. the wall is over, the wall is over. Like, when we pro first predicted this season and the fall of the wall, we thought that this would be the most dramatic moment of the entire season. Yeah. Because symbolically, it's incredible. Okay, let's move on. I think 
Speaking Rome of, is undefended. Rome is undefended. Speaking of moving on, I think that they will move on, the Night King and his army, very, very slowly. And I'm thinking that Winterfell would be where the battle really, really happens. Yeah. So let's go to Winterfell. What's going to happen in Winterfell? Winterfell is it's the only place when the game is still played. All the other characters, Cersei, Tyrion, Daenerys, Jon, they they practically already stopped playing the game, sort of, you know. Tyrion is committed, Daenerys is committed, Jon is committed. Mm. The place that it's still unclear what's going on there right. is the North, is Winterfell. And there's a lot of game to be played there because at the start of next season, we'll see probably a procession of John and Daenerys riding together with their dragons mm -hmm. on dragons. I don't know something like really, really nice, really powerful, a real powerful mm -hmm. symbolism. While the people in Winterfell already know that the king in the north, he's not really yeah. a Stark, he's a Targaryen. Yeah. So there's a lot of game to be played there. Yeah. The scene will maybe even reference the, one of the first scenes in the season one, in book one, yes. in which Robert comes and right. Ned and all the family greet him right, and, right, right. and there's a sense that that's not gonna last i mean uh if you read the books you know you have the sense uh, right. uh, so that could be nice like this mirror you know john is now coming right. not as a bastard but as a king or you know aegon aegon, aegon yeah he prefers to be called aegon uh, john, john is his slave name <laughs> john is his slave name <laughs> yeah uh so, yeah, so okay okay so let's so, let, so let's talk a little bit about the game first of all daenerys and john and, a and Aegon, sorry. <laughs> so, so first, Daenerys and Aegon, they have a zero-sum game unless they get married and then they both are whatever, they can be queen and yeah. king together. Yeah. But first of all, Jon doesn't want to be king. And will Sansa accept that? And will the Northerners accept that? And will Arya accept Aegon, Targaryen? And Tyrion is there, we see him looking around. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of games to be played. There's still a game. Yeah. Uh, we'll see in the first few episodes uh, some backstabbing yeah. and backroom deals and all of that kind of shit. Uh, something went on last episode with uh, Tyrion. Uh, he spoke with uh, Cersei. We, don't, we, we, ha we haven't seen everything yeah. that he said. Uh, yeah. And he looked, uh, you know, not satisfied, uh, I would say, when John uh, did uh, the love boat, uh, sex boat uh, with the Daenerys, <laughs> and uh, he was riding a dragon. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. He was fucking a dragon. It's not jealousy because you know, John He's is not. not John is not the Tyrion type. So it's, it's, that's not his type. <laughs> and Tyrion is not the jealous type. I, I haven't got yeah, that. Yeah, he it. like whores. He doesn't like you know. Right, right. So we thought that that Tyrion will kind of distance himself from Daenerys because she's a little bit mad going rogue but she didn't go mad okay he still seems distant yeah and they will have a rift between them we predict in some way or another he will say I don't want to do this for I don't know breaking the will it's also you know political will the magic will but I think there's another element to it maybe mm -hmm. the loyalty will I mean, I think there will be uh, a okay. recurring theme in the season. I would like to see it, you know, in the mm -hmm. last season about choosing loyalties. Loyalties to the name, loyalty to the house, loyalties to the realm, loyalties to the future, loyalties to the past. To yourself, and maybe. Loyalty, yeah, loyalty to, to, uh, to yourself. Theon will, has this, will have this choice. He already made his choice. John will have this choice eventually. Right. I'm I mean, Stark, we, we are we are like working under the assumption that the White Walkers will be defeated. Right. And <laughs> it will be a bittersweet episode. It will be a bittersweet ending. Yeah, like, because he said so. And because this is the spirit of the show. Right. Of uh, the story. And they have a dragon which is goes to what you have been saying that the dragons they are not inherently good. Yeah. It depends who holds them. Yeah. And now we have a living or a dying proof. Mm -hmm. Boom, now a dragon yep. is with the White Walkers. So it would have been maybe better if there were no dragons at all, because exactly. now the dragons can come, all of them go to the dark side. Dragons are not the opposite uh, to the White Walker. They're not, e they're not even the antidote to the White Walkers, because we already seen, seen three dragons losing, basically. And, and, we've, and, and we have seen people with swords killing White Walkers. So yes, they can be killed yes. without dragons. Yes, exactly. So. But you know what? I have a feeling that the Night King here, he may be some way protected 
from Valyrian steel and dragon glass. I read it somewhere. Maybe mm -hmm. he has dragon glass in him. Mm -hmm. So in order to kill him at the end, you would have to do it some other way. Killing Bran. Maybe Bran is the key to the wheel, to breaking the wheel. Is the hammer. Mm -hmm. So the theory that Bran is the Night King, you think maybe you will have to kill him at the end? Yeah, maybe Bran, I mean... Maybe Sansa carrying is, the sentence. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that would be nice. That would be fun. Uh, but Bran, I, he can't be the Night King because, you know, I've even seen Time Cop, you know, they can't, <laughs> they're both physical in the same title. Yeah, physical. but maybe like the physical body is Bran's and then be waiting for someone like exactly. Bran with the green side. The will, and, yeah. exactly. The will is Bran being born, somehow affecting the White Walker's uh, inception and then the wall and stuff like that. So in mm. order to break this will, Bran uh, and all the brands through history, because he remembers everything mm. except that the, uh, <laughs> that they were the married septum, legally. <laughs> yeah, the high septum and all. That's the only thing I missed. Killing Bran will break the will, break the will of time that is always happening and what was was is always happening. Then what was was will not was. Was, okay, okay, so maybe we'll learn that the White Walkers came back to life because Bran was born, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe they're coming not to kill everyone, but just like to break the wheel. Maybe they don't want to be White Walkers anymore. I don't know. I think there will be some twist in it. I hope so. In the books, I'm sure there'll be some kind of twist. Yeah. In the show, I don't know. Another thing that I thought that might be interesting, of course, we know that Winterfell is sitting on hot springs. Yeah. I assume that, that there's some justification in that besides just like a random fact. Maybe yeah. that will play out. And just an idea, maybe the Night King will be able to revive, reanimate all the dead Starks in the crypts. Like you see Ned. No? Uh, they're all like skeletons now. Yeah. And they're not connected even. They're like, Ned was like brought in like a box. You mm. know, remember Littlefinger right. right to judging by how uh, Benjen is basically a white, but not on the White Walker's side. Maybe uh, Starks have some kind of an immunity or something towards being turned. Because he's Stark. Maybe. Yeah, I, I think he, uh, the first White Walker was a Stark. Yeah. So there'll be a big battle. No surprise there. Yeah, huge Ice battle. and fire, man against uh, machine. Lots of uh, Dothraki screamers. Lots of, uh, like something epic. At least $700 billion worth of CGI. Yes. And there is the Azora High thing that a lot of people think. We also think that Daenerys is basically supposed to die in order to save the Long Night, right? The Azor Ahai, Misa Misa, Misa Nisa, all that shit. And now that yeah. John really loves Daenerys, that's the price that he will have to pay yes. because he's all about ending everything. And now in order to, end, to win the war, he has to kill his loved one. Oh my God, that would be so dramatic. Maybe in the show, Azor Ahai will be just one guy, but it can be several people. And the Red Woman, of course, Melisandre has to come back. Oh, yeah. It has been promised. Mm -hmm. So she bring, I don't know, like a ship full of red priests yeah. sending fireballs yeah. all the way, something weird, yeah. and, and then she'll die. Okay. Enough about the North. Let's go to King's Landing. So we saw Cersei is still there, Jamie less but she has Euron, and she's going to have the Golden Company. Well, we expected Cersei to die this season. Uh, she surprised us all. She was right. uh, intelligent and uh, rational, uh, even though very selfish and you know self-centered and don't, don't care about anything. Even not about even she doesn't even doesn't even care about the end of the world. Um, yeah, she cares about herself and her baby. Yeah, but she will die. I mean, she will die, and we expect King's Landing to suffer some kind of. A cataclysm maybe burned i thought it would happen in episode seven but it didn't i'm not so sure anymore it will happen in the show i don't know well king's landing is part of the wheel that started the wheel basically i mean there right. was the war sea seven kingdoms wheel yeah and also there is like this vision from the house of Vine from second season 
that the snow falls right. and the snow already started to fall right. in King's Landing. But if King's Landing is London, then London is still there. They are situated approximately the same place. Yeah, but the there south. was the fire in London too in the 17th century. You know, it's, um, it's kind of symbolic. That right, to start yeah. over, to start over. So maybe even Cersei will do that okay. when she was, uh, you know, pushed in, you know, into a, a corner. corner. Or maybe the dragons will do that or even maybe the white walkers will do that. Maybe the white walkers will flood a whole of West Force and they will find some point of defense because well, there has to be some tactics and strategy against the White Walkers. It could not be just a battle with each other, bec- like, you know, uh, like a full frontal melee with between two, ar- they have 100,000. Yeah, because that's only one episode. <laughs> yeah, they have 100,000 uh, soldiers with giants, with huge, uh, you know, bows. Uh, bows and arrows so that can kill dragon easily, basically. Right. Right, and there are no and <clears throat> all the armies together in Westeros. I'm not sure if they worth like thirty thousand. I don't know how much, how many, like Ansali, Dothraki, maybe two thousand, a, three thousand in the north. Maybe a hundred, maybe fifty thousand. Yeah, with Dorne and everybody else, maybe. Dorne is gone. Yeah, maybe a uh, fifty thousand, forty thousand, maybe. Okay, so they have to do something interesting in order. Yeah, to, they'll have to be uh, a tactic, okay. and they can't swim, so maybe they will drown them or something. I don't know. Okay, so, so, so how does Cersei die? Of course, the Valonqar, so it's not Jaime. Maybe it's Euron. Maybe it's a dragon. People have been speculating that the Valonqar is her own baby. That would be nice, actually. I don't yeah. know, maybe she'll die in labor. That's, I don't know. I yeah, don't know. That would be anticlimactic. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. Maybe Arya will take Littlefinger's face because I think okay. there's a reason why they cut his throat like that. And not behead, they didn't behead him and they didn't hang him. So maybe she will use the face. Go back to King's Lang, be like, okay, I, this is all crazy here. I'm here to serve you. I was Cersei. always, yeah, I would, you come to Cersei. I, would always, I was always your servant. I would always blah, blah, blah. And then. <laughs> and she's the Valonqar. <laughs> okay, okay. And what about the Clegane ball that has been foreshadowed? You said you know what's coming. Basically, I'm coming. Yesterday. Yeah, well... I don't know. I don't want to play Game Boy anymore. Yeah, but I think it will happen. I think there's like an inter- maybe an interesting twist in it. Um, the mountain maybe will kill Sander, the hound. Okay. And maybe Beric Dondarrion will be like, oh, no, 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 no. You're not supposed to die yet. I've seen it in the flames or whatever. He will give the kiss of life. Uh, like to he did the to Lady how. Stoneheart, mm-hmm. and then even maybe giving him the technique mm. of how to <laughs> light a sword. I guess so. So this is why maybe Thoros died. So it will be Beric that will have to revive yeah. him. Yeah. And then they will, okay, so Beric will die. Beric will die. Yeah. Uh, so so so, so the hound will have a flaming sword. Yeah, and it's got a nice twist because the hound is hates uh, the hound hates fire because his brother pushed him into the fire. So the only way to kill an undead is using fire. Yeah, and he's an undead, even he's though an it's undead. a different undead. Okay, yeah, so okay, okay, nice okay. Twist to okay, it. Okay, you know. okay, okay. Now the moment that you all have been waiting for. <laughs> Our predictions for Sansa Stark. Drum roll. We think she will be queen. No shit. The Lady of Winterfell, mm-hmm. and and her brother, the heir to the throne, just does not want to be king. Yeah. Daenerys, supposedly heir to the throne, doesn't seem that she will end up winning. So. She has ambition, Sansa. Sansa. Right. She has an ambition. Right. So during this season, she'll continue to build some power. There'll be tension between her and Jon. Yeah. And Daenerys, she won't like it. All these Southerners coming in. Jon, you're not a bastard. You're just a yeah. Targaryen. You're not my half brother or whatever. And I think. Uh, Based on the thing that two Lannisters have said, what the first Lannister was Tyrion, he said to Sansa, Lady Sansa, you will survive us all. Right. I think that was like a foreshadowing. Right. And Cersei, in the last episode, said, let the monsters kill each other off. When right, they're all right, dead, right, right, right. we come and take what... And pick up the pieces. Pick up the pieces. So Sansa is not part of the song of Ice and Fire. At she's all, not really. a hero. Uh, you know, she's not like with flaming sword. She doesn't have any magical. She has only her mind ex- right. experience and learning from the best. Right. She's a slow learner, but she learns. Yeah, but That's she learns. She and she's a younger queen. Right. It so. seems like now only queens can, can <laughs> rule. So I'm thinking she'll get Tyrion somehow. She'll get Jaime. I think she'll betray Tyrion. 
and John and Daenerys in some way in like a red wedding moment. I'm not like we had a video about that. I'm not sure it will play out specifically like a red wedding, but like a big dramatic moment at the end after the war. Some something that okay, she will win, but we will be even maybe sad for her. It can be like a tragic win. Yeah. Like she'll be alone, she'll be cold. She was always like happy and optimistic about the world and everything is beautiful and now everything will be dark. Yeah. So And ruling is not like a bed of roses with mm -hmm. you know, just bringing babies to the world. No. Uh, ruling, especially if you're the sole ruler. And especially is work. And especially if she does it the way Littlefinger told her. She has to imagine the worst about every single person the entire time. Imagine everything that could happen that's dark. So Queen Sansa? Okay, so let's go, let, let, let's go quickly through the other characters. And then let's talk about the day after. Okay, so okay. Keyboard Dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sam, maybe he'll be Lord of High Garden. I don't know. We have to think about it. Brienne and Jamie, I think, will be part of the, of, of of Sansa's Queen's Guard. Yeah, Sam, uh, Sam, I think, will be like advisors slash maybe the main ma master of the real. But maybe being a lord, being forced to be a lord, that could also be an interesting payoff. He started his story by running away, not being not running away, pushed away. You're not the lord. You're something else, and he just like assumed that it's part of his identity, and now he will have to be a yeah. lord. Yeah, you're right, but I would like to see Warden him... Warden of the West. Yeah, I would like to see him in his character, like getting something that he wants, which means... Okay, let's see. I want to be a, I, he wants to be a magician. This is, he wants to be a wizard. What about Arya? What about Arya? Arya, well... I think she'll leave. She'll end up saying, I don't belong anywhere. I'll just like, go and roam, wherever I may roam. I would, I would like to see her... Uh, settle down and get married. <laughs> that will be um, a nice right. closure to her arc from this tomboy. I don't want her to be a mom. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, final part of the video. The day after. Mm -hmm. So we got Sansa's queen. We got the d dragons and the white walkers and all the monsters and all of magic being destroyed. And Hopefully. we have one kingdom, a united kingdom, not the seven kingdoms anymore because all the houses are, have deteriorated. Yeah. And I'm thinking Sansa will be voted as queen by the lords, right? Yeah. Well, there will be no restoration. It will be right. very disappointing right. story-wise if, if all this trouble and blah, blah, blah. Right. And then again, John blood and loyalty and yeah. house. Yeah. So... Whatever. I imagine something like a Magna Carta, uh, you know, solution, which means a queen or a king, a sole mo monarch with executive power. Right. But over, over the entire land. Over the entire land. You know, there is one kingdom and that's it. A standing army. A standing army. The Night Watch doesn't exist. They don't need the Night Watch anymore. There's, yeah. no, there's no watch. But the it's watch a good is ended. <laughs> you know? But it's a good prototype. For a good prototype. Army. Exactly. So no Lannister army and Stark army and Tully army. One Westerosi army. Yeah, with loyalty to to the crown, to the crown, and not to a particular person. What about like if the lords indeed vote Sansa? What about like a House of Lords sort like you had in? Yeah, that's England? the part. Yeah, that's the part of the Magna Carta, like the creation of mm. a parliament. You that know? was in the Magna Carta. Basically, yeah, like okay. creation of this institution that's supposed to balance the power that the king or queen right. hold. Because the fact that there were no checks and balances on the latter Targaryen kings and specifically the Mad Kings, that what started the entire deterioration and also in the Dance with Dragons, their mm -hmm. civil wars. Mm -hmm. So checks and balances. Checks okay. and balances and also a sense of loyalty. If you're a peasant, you first, you're loyal to your lord. If you're in the new lord, you're loyal to your high lord. Right. Right. If you're high right. lord, you're loyal to the king. Right. And it's like a mob family with the captains and... Right. And, li and like Jamie said, there are so many oaths you can't... Uh, you, yeah. you will break an oath one way or another yeah. because you have so many conflicting loyalties. Exactly. And something that is very modern and in terms of political science is the loyalty towards the institution, towards the state. The state is the new lord, is the new king. You're not loyal personally to the right. king. You don't need to re renew your vows every time a king dies. Right. Just you're loyal to the realm. You're loyal right. to the kingdom. To the sovereign. And, and I think the development of patriotism in that sense was helped a lot by the invasion 
of the nerves. Right. Uh, so, so like a proto-nationalism. Proto-nationalism, yeah. It started in England. So they had already this island identity, and then right. they had their island church, which is separated from the church in Europe, Church of the Nation. Right. It was the Anglican Church. Right. It was an English right. and it's the a political institution. Anyway, the, the next step from feudalism and like this balkanized feudalism is twor towards an absolute monarchism. Because the story is based on the War of the Roses, yeah. which is at the end of the, of, of, of the Middle Ages. And after that? The Tudors ruling and... Soul House. is a soul house, yeah. And the start of the absolute monarchism with Henry VII and then Henry VIII. And after that, Elizabeth. Right, and, and then in mainland Europe. Okay, so overall, this bitter swing ending is a better political system, a more stable land, some of the characters that have been underdogs getting some kind of payoff, mm -hmm. other, but the bitter part can be Tyrion being exiled, Sansa being lonely, Arya doesn't find herself, John. John and Daenerys. Daenerys. Mm -hmm. Dead, be gone. I don't, I don't think that John will be dead, but whatever. I think he will. If this is the way it goes down, this is a story that starts with the monsters, the dangers looming over the political realm, mm -hmm. and the kingdom, the seven kingdoms, slowly crumbling down, and the characters paying the price, the ultimate price. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, after the magic is gone, there's a new world yes. that is more just, but they have paid with blood yes like the you know the wheel of history basically right okay so this will be like the fantasy epic to end all fantasy epics but in some way it mirrors a little bit the bittersweet ending of lord of the rings but here because there's so much politics so this will be the solution the, poli the, the solution will be a political solution because the problem is a political problem yeah Okay, so what do you think about this kind of season A? Do you hope it will go down this way? Do you have a different idea? Be sure to mention in the comments. And if you want to become a patron and get all our extra videos, we're keeping on with our extra videos during the off-season. We'll add more content, more things. We'll do live stream, all kinds of shit. So go to patreon.com slash GOT Academy to get all the information you need about that. And thanks for watching. Thank you, patrons, for supporting us throughout the season and before and after. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.